Welcome everyone. I am Jay Gill, a compounding pharmacist at the Compounding Center in Leesburg, Virginia. Today we have with us Dr. Ebony Cornish from the Amen Clinic in Reston, Virginia. Dr. Cornish and I have worked together for over 15 years and we work well together because we have one common goal. We want people to feel better. We were talking one day post pandemic during the riots, the protests, and we decided we needed to discuss this topic, and we call it healthy minds during these crazy times. Welcome, Dr. Cornish. Dr. Cornish, could you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your practice? Yes, um, Jay. I focus um, with integrative medicine and functional medicine, which is a specialty that really focuses on the underlying root cause of disease and illness. I've been, I was collaborating with Amen Clinic for over 10 years um, with my private practices and then decided last year to just merge my private practice, which specializes in the treatment of tick-borne diseases, autoimmune diseases, genetic imbalances, and gut instability with the Amen Clinic because here we have such a special interest in really getting to the root cause of to why patients suffer from mental illness. And we also work really hard at treating mental illness and chronic psychiatric conditions naturally. We also work with treating memory patients and Alzheimer's disease and trying to find ways to improve those symptoms naturally by understanding the why. And that's what I tell patients. I understand why a person is not well, unlike before when I was just in family practice and I would easily give people what it is they needed um, for that diagnosis. And you're right, we felt that this topic was very important and very relevant to what is going on today. And I'm delighted that you were able to gather questions um, from our community, and hopefully we would shed some insight on these very important topics. So, you know, uh, we have been social distancing from friends and family for over two months. Then the protests and the riots started. This made it mentally overwhelming for some of us, our kids, our parents. Um, can you share your thoughts on how you would recommend we handle stress, the anxiety, dealing with this new climate, well, the key word that you used, Jay, was new, because this is a climate unlike anything we have ever experienced before. As a physician, I always have to remind myself that it's okay to be human. It's okay to be affected by the things that are going around um, in our environment. And patients should do that as well, because just like we know people in the general population are suffering, I have patients and colleagues and friends who are first-line responders at hospitals, and it's really taking an emotional toll on them. And one thing that I have to remind myself daily is that these are variables that some of them we don't have the answers to, and we'll eventually get there. And this will eventually be over. Um, I found myself when this first started back in March, I was just reading every single paper on COVID I can get my hands on, maybe 10, 11, 12 patient papers a day, watching the news 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then I found myself understanding and reflecting and saying, you know, it's okay for me to be aware, but I don't necessarily need to be consumed. And that's a key component to us re-entering into society. We have to remind ourselves, do what it is that makes you happy. During this time, we're reflecting on our positive traits. We've had a lot of time alone and we're reflecting on our family and friends. And just know that if you focus on what makes you happy and what makes you healthy, then you have to remember the best is yet to come and we're going to get past this. 
So it seems like, you know, self-care and being mindfulness is a key here. Um, how much do you think one should dedicate uh, to self-care and what types of activities would that include? Yeah, I, I usually um, tell my patients and friends that minimally you need about five minutes minimally a day. There are so many apps out right now that help with just self-care and mindfulness and teaching even deep breathing. Um, one technique that I personally use is deep breathing management 10 times a day. Simple as that to get started. So I breathe in three seconds, breathe out six seconds. And doing that 10 times is actually therapeutic. And there are other methods you can use. Um, one other easy method is just alternative breathing where you inhale out of one nostril, inhale, and then you cover the other nostril and you exhale. And then after you've exhaled, you inhale again in that same nostril and do the other, the same thing on the other side. That took just a few seconds. And if you don't have a regular pro program for mindfulness, which a lot of us don't because our minds are always racing, just simply doing deep breathing, other things like yoga is helpful, you know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, some sorts of home exercise and activities um, will be really helpful. And then sometimes just taking time out for yourself um, is useful. That's self-care, just shutting the door turning off the phone, turn off the computer, and using 10 to 20 minutes just to do what it is you want to do. And Epsom salt baths are amazing because that's a form not only of relaxation, but the magnesium that you get from those baths really help you kind of shed some of those kind of toxins out of the body. So self-care, you have to remember to utilize some of those methods. There are many others. So, you know, it's, uh, we are taking care of ourselves, making time for doing these activities you talked about. How about um, supporting our family and friends during this time uh, where there's just limited interaction with others? Um, how, how, do, how do we handle that? And that's an excellent question and personally something that I've had to deal with, you know, during this pandemic. Um, we have so many different forms of communication these days. We're using social media. We're using Zoom um, group visits. We're using group chats. All of those things are important and can help you kind of get those new relationships or reignite those old ones with people you love. I found myself during this pandemic catching up with friends that I may have not spoken with in 10 years or so. And it was amazing because we had more time to just enjoy each other's company, even though it might have been visual or over the telephone digital. Um, especially if you're dealing with elder care, because that's a common Thing that I hear a lot and one personally that I deal with. Just those daily calls um, can make a huge difference and have a significant impact. The other day, Jay, I received a handwritten letter from a friend who I, I haven't received handwritten letters in years. And that just kind of brightened my day because it showed me that little bit of, you know, that gift, that token appreciation, yeah. it made a whole world of difference on that day. So just doing those easy, simple tasks for loved ones and reconnecting with friends um, via all the different forms of media we have right now, and even letter writing can make a difference, can really make a difference. So, you know, going back to self-care, uh, one of the things, um, you know, getting enough sleep is important. And could you share with us, like, how important is it to get sleep and what could someone do uh, perhaps naturally to help fall asleep or improve their quality of sleep? 
So this is something I stress with my patients and my friends, just the importance of having good sleep hygiene. I'm trying as much as possible to go to bed at the same time every night, trying not to sleep in front of those devices, the television, the Wi-Fi, the cell phone, putting that on airplane mode, um, because some of those things are just constantly stimulating you. Because when you sleep, the body heals. How many times have you said, oh, I feel so good. I got a great night's sleep last night. I mean, it really affects your well-being, and how you engage with others. I was so happy when my my triplets learned how to sleep all night. That was like the best time (laughs) of my life. And I was like, yes, but I found myself with those intermittent, you know, episodes of being awake with three, with babies, three babies. I was like always tired throughout the day. And even if you have health conditions, because I treat a lot of patients who may say, oh, I have a terrible night's sleep. And my next question may be, well, do you snore? Or, you know, and that could be a sign of things like sleep apnea, which needs to be further evaluated by a sleep doctor. Or are there things like your legs moving or you're in chronic pain? Um, Some of those medical conditions that can kind of keep us up at night. So you really want to make sure there's not something medically causing you to have um, fractured non-restorative sleep. And so besides sleep hygiene and kind of making those other lifestyle changes. There are supplements that people can use that are helpful like melatonin, um, L-theanine, magnesium calm. But with any supplements, I always tell patients, make sure you discuss it with your physician first. That's very important. But there are great nutraceuticals out there just to help you get that good night's sleep, which is what we need to heal our bodies. Very much agree with that. Discuss it with your healthcare practitioner first. Um, So now we're taking care of ourselves. We're keeping up with family and friends. How do I know if I'm depressed or just just impacted or my mood is impacted by this current climate? I mean, what are those signs and symptoms should one sort of look out for? And that's a great question. Um, Depression itself is biological. So that means it affects the body and you start having things like um, chronic fatigue or lack of desire for things that made you happy. Um, constantly thinking negative thoughts, um, low appetite. Um, Those are also some really important signs. And just some of those things, you just can't shake it off. And then I find when you're just dealing with the current climate, which is naturally, you can be angry, you can be sad, but you're usually able to control those emotions and those feelings. Unlike depression and other neuropsychiatric symptoms or psychiatric symptoms, it's really things you can't shake. They're out of your control and they're having an impact on your overall well-being and other possible health conditions. So that's really the difference. It's okay for you to have a negative feeling or be sad or upset about things that are bothering you currently with the current climate you live in, we're living in. But at the same time, when you find that you just can't control those feelings, when you find that you're just overwhelmed and you just can't shake that, that's when you know there's time to probably seek some assistance. And family members are the best source of feedback. You know, they watch you every day. They can usually, and loved ones can tell the difference between just your feelings compared on a situation versus your mood long term. And so seek that feedback and know that sometimes with mental health, it gets such a stigma attached to it. Um, it but it should be looked at like every other condition. If your blood pressure is high, you get treated for that. If you have headaches, you see a doctor for that. If you have gut issues, you see a doctor for that. And the list goes on and on. And I think we need to include 
things like depression on that list as well. So, you know, you answered one of the questions on our list, when to seek help. Um, now, the team at the Amen Clinic involves psychiatrists and integrative medical uh, care. What are the different options for psychiatric treatment at the Amen Clinic? Yeah, so at our clinic, um, we are a national or a clinic, so we have numerous doctors around the country, psychiatrists and functional doctors, um, that focus on, like I said, the root cause of psychiatric symptoms. So we perform, we all perform telehealth because that's the way medicine is transitioning, at least during this time. And if you're interested in getting an evaluation of what your brain looks at, looks like, um, here at the Amen Clinic, we perform spec scans that actually tell you what kind of impairments may be associated with your, your brain function. And the psychiatrist here do a great job at finding natural strategies, including herbals, lifestyle changes, and other supplements to really help treat a person's mood. And when you treat with the functional medicine doctor, you kind of then get that, like I said earlier, understanding of root causes. So we test for chronic infections that affect the brain and affect the mood, toxins like mold that affect the mood, um, hormone imbalances that definitely have a negative impact on your mood. So we get dig deeper into the root causes. So I tell you, uh, you know, this new normal is stressful. And as you mentioned, stress plays an important role on our mental health. How does stress affect other health conditions? Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a very, very important question. Because people don't realize that when you're stressed, and let's talk just first about anxiety. Mm -hmm. Sometimes anxiety can feel like a heart attack. You can have panic attacks. You can have chest pain and sweating and difficulty breathing um, because of that disorder. And it can interrupt your ability to function. It also stimulates what we call sympathetic nerve, which is kind of our fight and flight response. You know, we're always on edge. And then you have um, an increase in what you call cortisol. And cortisol is the hormone that gives you energy. That's the adrenals. Um, that's a key hormone that stimulates the you know, the production of other hormones as well. But when our body is stressed, one, because we're not sleeping, or a mood is interrupted, or we're feeling anxious, then that cortisol goes up. And there's something I like to call the cortisol steal. It's something we learn in functional medicine, is that when that cortisol shoots up because your body is panicked or stressed, then you're going to do steal the energy from producing other hormones and doing other things that make you better because your body is so focused on producing that cortisol. So it may lead to other things like hypothyroidism or sex hormone imbalances and just overall fatigue. And even when you have that cortisol level that's stimulated, it can even worsen depression and anxiety. So what I have found during this pandemic is that a lot of my patients, even thinking about my, my Lyme patients, for example, some of which have been in remission for years and been able to be off any type of treatment and modify their symptoms simply with lifestyle changes. I found a lot of patients returning and reporting those old symptoms resurfacing. And that's because of that cortisol effect. Chronic disease in general can flare up when your body is under stress. We know that stress kills, right? Stress is some of the common is the common cause for some of the most common conditions we have out there, like heart disease. That's a contributing factor. Stresses, strokes, and also hormone imbalances. So when you think about that 
and put it in perspective, it makes sense as to why people who may be suffering from conditions that at one point were in remission, they may have more symptoms now. They may have higher blood pressure, higher heart rate, more symptoms of chronic infections and other illnesses because of that cortisol response and that stress response. So uh, it seems like uh, I just want to summarize a little bit here that we really need to uh, reduce our stress. We need to get a restful night of sleep, a restorative sleep. We need to take time to take care of ourselves by doing, you know, the yoga and the breathing techniques. And then if we still can't shake those negative feelings off, we need to seek help and seek help. Uh, such as a practitioner like you who's integrative functional medicine uh, physician that's going to look at everything. Now, one of the things that you and I have been talking about, and perhaps it would be a continuation to this discussion, is detoxification. Can you expand a little bit on what a detox program is? And that's a great term that we always hear detox, fasting, and, you know, it's thrown around so loosely. Um, I first want to focus on the mental detox because right now a lot of us can use it. Um, If we constantly find ourselves kind of stimulated by social media or negative stories, then that's going to impact our well-being. So take time away from kind of some of those external stimuli Focus on things that bring you joy and happiness. I mean, for example, it could be as simple as I have a good friend of mine who I know once a week always sends cute puppy pictures via email. I mean, they are adorable. And I know I'm going to Oprah that message every week because I know I'm going to smile. And she also can send cute baby pictures that she got online. That's a way of helping her friends de-stress. And when I'm reading things, I try to focus at times on things that I know will kind of make me happy. But you still need to stay aware of what's going on around you, but you need to have time to detoxify your mind and understand that it's your decision. You know, you shouldn't be forced to do anything you don't want to do. I have a friend of mine, she told me for the last week, She hasn't touched her computer. She hasn't turned on her television. She hasn't logged on the social media. And that's (laughs) okay. You sometimes might need that break. When I go on vacation, phone is off, you know, computer is off. We need that mental detox because all those stimuli can also trigger what I mentioned early, earlier, which is that cortisol response. And then when it comes to doing a body detox, we can do easy things. And I'm just going to give some easy examples because that's what I like to do. It make it practical. You know, things like green smoothies or if you go to an integrative doctor, they may have detoxification infusions. I know that's something we offer at our clinic. Um, Epsom salt baths, like I mentioned earlier, drinking water, simple things that just help you clean out a lot of the toxins that have been stored in our body because we're all toxic. Everything we breathe, we touch, we smell is going to be some sort of toxin. May that be mold or metals or pesticides. Our world is more toxic than it has ever been, both medically and a lot with the mental component. So we just have to focus on distinguishing between the two, but more importantly, reminding ourselves what's important. That's kind of the key. Well, this particular episode or uh, webinar was more about brain detoxification, and we're going to save the whole body detoxification program for the next upcoming one. So everyone, please keep an eye out for our next episode. I want to thank everyone for joining us, and Dr. Cornish, uh, What is the best way for someone to reach you? Yes, so um, the phone number for the Amen Clinic is 703 
880-4000. That's where I work. And then www.aimingclinics.com is our website. That's usually the best form of communication um, that you should use if you're interested. I can also be found, you know, online. We have other webinars and interviews that I've done with the Amen Clinics um, and other places. So you can find me on YouTube as well. And I can be reached via email at j at compoundingcenter.com. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.